I'm here at Infosec 2024 with Carol Winkris from Git Guardian. Hi, Carol. Thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you. Hello, Chris. Um, first and foremost, uh, Git Guardian. What is it you do? What problems are you trying to solve? So we are a code security platform, and we specialize in secret security. Everything within, uh, you know, dealing with your secrets so that they're not hard coded because it's uh, very high impact vulnerabilities for a company. So we have different offers around secrets detection uh, in the public space, public uh, GitHub monitoring, or within your internal space, uh, your repositories, your Slack, your Jira, everywhere developers actually spend their time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but secret sprawl is a big issue. Uh, and if uh, one attacker finds a secret, usually it's an easy way to enter, move laterally, and then you know have a, a deep impact on your on your um, infrastructure or whatever they penetrated. No, absolutely. It seems to me that not a few months go by, and you don't see kind of in the news, um, you know, secret leaked or there's a secret yes. on GitLab exposed, or um, again some more secrets. They seem to. Be, so why is it? Why do these secrets find themselves in the first place, kind of exposed openly? Yeah, it's uh, usually it's a human mistake. So it could be you know you hard code uh, because it's easier, quicker. It's you know a single path of resistance for the developer to do. Okay, I'll, I'll test it, remove it. The problem is they don't remove, or they remove into the, the you know the live version, but it's there in the history. And it's called, we call them zombie leaks, basically, because the secret is the people who did that, they think they fixed the problem, but in fact, it's still there. It could be uh, sometimes you have a private repository, uh, you have your secrets there, which is already a mistake, but then you make it public by mistake, and you have secrets uh, out in the wild. Um, but often it's a, yeah, it's a human mistake. That's, uh, yeah, and I think, it's good to be able to have that kind of technology in place to put guardrails around yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. You have to. Use. With, with uh, Git Guardian, you, we have we put guardrails at different level of the SDLC. So, the the most important part is putting the detection at the VCS level because once it reached the server, it's already compromised. You have to rotate. So we always check there. But what we are able to do is also help companies shift left with uh, you know pre push, pre pre commit, pre receive. Uh, hooks where you can even detect secrets even before it enters the code base. So in some of our cl clients, they have pre-commit in place at the developer level. So once uh, the code is tried to commit, then we have a block it, uh, like a message saying, are you sure you want to commit that secret? And usually you said, oh my god, no. And Actually, so it no, doesn't leave know. the laptop of the developer, so it's not compromised, you don't have to rotate. Don't, so remediation costs less, the more you're on the left, right? So because no, remediation can be very complex. Um, that's the thing. Absolutely. You know, it's not as easy as just, hey, let's just rotate our no, secrets. And no, I think no. it's good. It kind of puts the emphasis, again, it's this shifting left thing of putting the emphasis of enabling people yes. to do security. Kind of essentially doing security with people as opposed to against them. Exactly. What we don't want, we, we call it shift left, not shove left, because we want <laughs> We want to uh, give the developer and AppSec team a mean to work together on remediation. Because there are a lot of you know, detection engine on the market. Detection is now more of uh, a commodity. But uh, what we are focusing on at GitGarden is really fixing the problem, remediating the problem. Because obviously detecting, if you just throw AppSec people a lot of you know, alerts, and they're not able to fix it, what's the point, right? So Absolutely. we want people to be able to fix it. So we work a lot on prioritization, uh, scoring, so they know uh, out of these thousand secrets, which are the 10 I really need to fix quickly because they're still live, because they're you know, on, uh, on application that are running. Or So we are able to do that with a lot of uh, filters and way of presenting the information. And also we put everything in place for the AppSec to be able to collaborate with uh, the developer because they are the one who can fix it, right? Because they know the code, they, they write the code, so they need to be involved. So they are either on the platform or they can also uh, collaborate through normal, you know, Jira tickets or other tools or even by email. And so it depends really on uh, how the company are organized to, uh, to uh, you know, to involve the developers at different levels. So. Absolutely. And those guardrails are important, I think. Um, one thing I've noticed as well, a lot of people speak around kind of insider threats. So, you know, these can be accidental insider threats or yes. even 
deliberate insider threats and often there's that tension inside of companies. So I certainly have that in how far is too far around the monitoring and security control, you know, where you, how do you, in your opinion, kind of strike that trade-off of balance between privacy and intrusion when it comes to Yeah, I think security. people have to bear in mind, for example, in our offer, we have two offers, the internal monitoring one, but also the public monitoring one, where we are able to help companies uh, put surveillance and, and monitoring on a developer personal public repository. You could consider, oh, my company is looking at my, at my code. This is, but it's first, it's public code, and second, as soon as you copy paste code from the company, you take responsibility on using some stuff that might be a danger for your company. So, uh, what we help with is really cover this, uh, you know, uh, blank space where the company have difficulties to know where the code is actually going. And, we, and it could be employees, but it could be subcontractors. I mean, there was this case with Toyota, I think, where a subcontractor leaked a key, and for five years it was on public GitHub, with a lot of people could access database and, and enter. This is really, uh, you know, uh, it's, pretty a, it's pretty bad. So I think you have to you have to make sure that your, your developer understand that as long as they're using you know, uh, company code, they are using proprietary code, so they should be aware that, you know, you need to check. And you, and, and also it helps them, because frankly, we have this uh, pro bono um, alerting system where we uh, inform any developer in the world, even if they don't use us, if they leak a secret, we send them an email saying, we think you leaked a secret, are you sure? <laughs> and we help them. So usually they don't see that as, a, you know, um, surveillance or anything they see no. that more we help them because it's actually quite useful that's a lot like almost a bug bounty program except for secrets in the, the wild so basically you see something that somebody yes. potentially needs to yes. fix in yes. their own world whether yes. they're a customer or not yes and you're like hey yeah. are you sure you wanted to do this yes exactly that's really yeah, good yeah. that's actually yeah, yeah. Doing good for the world of information yes. security. And, so and by the impressive. way, the, the software is is free for individual developers and team below twenty five, hmm. because we yeah we consider we should help for the sanity of code hygiene Absolutely. and work on this. So that's why we we have this freemium version. Absolutely, and kind of helping information security generally. Exactly. In yeah, a general yeah. sense, helps everybody, customers. Yes, or exactly, not. and it's really important because even with this, we don't see the problem fixed. So yeah. everybody needs to. You know, do yeah. something. Last question. So, exposed keys, worst case scenario, can lead to things like ransomware as well, especially when you mentioned databases and things like yes. that. Something that's up for discussion. I'm asking a lot of people this, this question, and I, personally, I don't think there's a clear cut answer to it, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. So, there's talk in government of banning people paying ransomware pay, pay, payments. You know, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, uh, not really. On that, way? it's really. I'm not sure what you, I mean, different countries, different rules um, on ransomware. This is really difficult because I guess when your systems are hacked and you're blocked, sometimes you have to, I think. Yeah. I don't know. And on the other end, I read a, a big paper done by our, um, our partner in Japan and it's hacking is an economy, right? You have some people specialized in this and that, and it's like really an economy as it, on its own. So funding it with paying ransomware is not a good thing either, you know? So That's it's true. It's difficult to find the right balance, I would exactly. say. Exactly, I think it's easy to find an answer if we all lived in a vacuum in an exactly. ideal Exactly, and, and the day it's happening to you, and even as an individual, if I lost all my personal pictures, would I be, you know, what is it? Do I lose everything or do I pay to get it back? It's really difficult, you know, and for companies, and on, it's a bit the same. Yeah, and on the flip side is the criminals, you know. Yes. I don't know a criminal enterprise that when you threaten their revenue stream, that they're going to say, oh, actually, no, I think I'll do legitimate work now. Yeah, no, no. no actually, <laughs> usually yeah. the attacks get worse in the short term. Yes, you yes. You know, um, so I think yeah, yeah, yeah. it is a big question. That's why I'm asking people, you know, yeah, like yeah. I say, I don't... Uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, it's real difficult, I think, to, to know exactly. I think the, the, the context and the consequences and everything should, should go into the equation of your decision as no. a company. But also, I know some states have mandate that people should not, you know, I think in the US, they should not pay ransom, but uh, yeah. Whether or not that pushes ransomware payments underground, yes, who yeah. knows. Yeah, who anyway, knows. it's a big issue and uh, probably one we uh, yeah. don't necessarily have all the time to discuss. Carol, thank you so much thank for you. spending the time with me today. Thank you. And I wish you a um, great rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.